This video is an introduction to probability. By the end of the video, you will have a basic understanding of probability, such as how to define and compute probability, and how to use the addition rule and the multiplication rule. Probability is defined as the number of events of interest divided by the total number of equally likely events. Probabilities must be between 0 and 1, and the probability of all events in the outcome space must be 1. Let's look at an example to see how to use this definition to compute probabilities. Here we have a box with 16 shapes in it. Some of the shapes are squares, some are circles, some of them are blue, and some of them are green. Suppose we ask the question, what is the probability of randomly selecting a square? To compute this probability, we count up the total number of objects, which is 16, and we count up the total number of squares, which in this case is 6. And with that, the probability of randomly selecting a square is 6 sixteenths. Suppose we want to know, what is the probability of randomly selecting a circle? Well, we have 10 circles and 16 objects, so the probability is 10 sixteenths. As another example, what is the probability of randomly selecting a green object? We have 9 objects that are green, and there are 16 total objects, therefore the probability of selecting a green object is 9 sixteenths. Now let's suppose we have two events, event A and event B, and we'd like to know the probability of observing either event A or event B. To make that computation, we need to apply the addition rule, which states that the probability of the union of A and B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the joint probability of A and B. If we can assume that the events are mutually exclusive, the addition rule simplifies. The addition rule becomes the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. This simplification is very handy, but we really need to know that the events are mutually exclusive in order to use it. Let's look a little bit more closely at what we mean by mutually exclusive events. Here you see a slide with two Venn diagrams. The diagram on the left shows the case where the events are not mutually exclusive, and that's because the probability of observing both A and B is greater than zero. The Venn diagram on the right shows the case where events A and B are mutually exclusive because the probability of observing them both is equal to zero. To make this concept a little bit more concrete, let's suppose we have a deck of playing cards. If we were interested in aces and spades, we know that event A would be the aces and event B would be the spades, but we also have ace of spades. And since the probability of having an ace of spades is 1 52nd, that's greater than zero, therefore aces and spades are not mutually exclusive. By contrast, we could either be interested in clubs or hearts, and there's no card that's both a club and a heart. Therefore, clubs and hearts are mutually exclusive events because of the probability of observing them both on a single card is equal to zero. Let's return to our example with different shapes and compute the probability of the union of two events. What is the probability of randomly selecting a blue square or a green square? These two events are mutually exclusive because there's no square that is both blue and green. In order to do this computation, then, we can use the more simplified addition rule and take the probability of a blue square plus the probability of a green square, and that's going to equal to 4 sixteenths plus 2 sixteenths, which equals 6 sixteenths. So the probability of randomly selecting a blue square or a green square is 6 sixteenths. Now let's look at a slightly more complicated example. What is the probability of randomly selecting a circle or a green color? These two events are not mutually exclusive because we have some circles that are green. Therefore, the probability of having a circle or a green color is equal to the probability of a circle plus the probability of a green shape minus the probability of having a green circle. And with that, we have 10 sixteenths plus 9 sixteenths minus 7 sixteenths, which equals 12 sixteenths. This example shows the importance of subtracting off that joint probability. If we had not done that, we would have had a probability of 
nineteen sixteenths, which is not a properly defined probability. It's it's not possible given our definition of probability. Therefore, we have to, in this particular case, since we have events that are not mutually exclusive, we have to subtract off the part where they overlap, which in this case is 7 sixteenths. Let's take what we know about computing probabilities and using the addition rule and apply it to a new problem. Suppose you flip three fair coins, and each coin is either heads or tails. Our random variable of interest is the number of heads facing up. The table on the left shows all possible outcomes. For example, we could have three heads, we could have two heads and a tail, we could have heads, tails, heads, and so on. Each of these possible outcomes has a probability of one eight. But we're interested in not each individual permutation, but the number of heads. For example, the number of ways of obtaining three heads is one eighth because there's only one permutation that gives us three heads. The number of ways of obtaining two heads is three eighths because there's three different ways of getting two heads and a tails. And if we add together those individual probabilities, we have one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth, which equals three eighth. If we look at the number of ways of obtaining one head, there are also three ways of doing that. Therefore, we have one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth, which gives us three eighths. Finally, there's only one way of obtaining no heads. There's only one way of obtaining three tails, and that probability is one eighth. In this particular example, we've actually created a probability distribution. A probability distribution describes all possible values of a random variable and the probability of observing each value. In this probability distribution, each probability must be greater than or equal to zero, and the total probability must be one. If we look back at our table on the right, the first column shows the values of the random variable, which can be three, two, one, or zero. And the column on the right shows the probability of each possible value. For example, the probability of having two heads is 3 eighths, or 0.375. If we add up all of those probabilities, they sum to one. Therefore, the table on the right shows the probability distribution for flipping three fair coins. The addition rule allows us to compute the probability of A or B. However, there are times when we want to know the probability of A and B. To make that computation, we need to use the multiplication rule. The multiplication rule for independent events says that the probability of event A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. For example, if you flip two coins, what is the probability of getting two heads? That's going to be the probability of a head on one coin times the probability of a head on the other coin, which equals 0.5 times 0.5 which equals 0.25. The probability of observing two heads when you flip two coins is equal to 0.25. The multiplication rule extends to multiple events. If you would like to know the probability of getting three heads when you flip three coins, that's going to be the probability of a head times the probability of a head times the probability of head, which equals 0.125. In many applications, we use the multiplication rule and the addition rule together. Suppose you draw a card from a deck of cards and then return the card to the deck. After repeating this process three times, what is the probability of observing two hearts? We know that the probability of a heart is going to equal to 1350 seconds because there are 13 cards in a deck that are hearts. The probability of not a heart is equal to 3950 seconds. By the multiplication rule, the probability of two hearts and a not heart is going to be 1350 seconds times 1350 seconds times 3950 seconds, which equals 0 0.0469. However, there are three ways we can obtain two hearts and a not heart. We can have a heart, heart, not heart, heart, not heart, heart, not heart, heart, Heart. We use the addition rule to consider all of these three possibilities. And by the addition rule, the final probability is 0 0.0469 plus 0 0.0469 plus 0 0.0469, which equals 0 0.1407. Therefore, the probability of observing two hearts and a not heart 
is equal to 0 0.1407. In this introduction, I use two terms that are often confused. Mutually exclusive events are not the same thing as independent events. Event A and event B are mutually exclusive if the probability of A and B equals zero. For example, the probability of flipping one coin and seeing both a head and a tail is zero. Therefore, the two sides of a coin are mutually exclusive events. By comparison, event A and event B are independent if the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. If we flip two coins, the probability of seeing a head and a tail is 0.5 times 0.5, which equals 0.25. Mutually exclusive, non-trivial events are necessarily dependent events because the state of one event depends on the state of the other. It's important to keep these two terms in mind and distinguish between them. Mutually exclusive events simplify our use of the addition rule, and independent events simplify our use of the multiplication rule. Examples of using the multiplication rule in this video always assume that we had independent events. If we cannot make this assumption, we have to use conditional probability, which is a bit more complicated, and it's the subject of a different video.